can you tell when I have taken a happy pill or not? See, doing this show after having re- uh, knee replacement, I'm sitting here and I'm in pain. I'm only four weeks in, three weeks on Monday. And I'm in real pain, and you guys have seen me sweating, right? Well, let me ask you a question. At some point during this show, the pain gets a little bit too much, and I take a happy pill. I'm good now. I haven't taken it yet. But let's play Can You Tell? Does my demeanor change? And can you tell when I have taken the happy pill? I digress. Can you tell also falls in to the Kansas City Chiefs. Can you tell when a team gets annoying? Can you tell when you start liking? Let me give you an example. Peyton and Eli Manning. I was told by their guy. They got a guy. You know, one of their guys is here at Indy. They're very careful about overexposure. They understand that the window for them after playing isn't really like this long. It's long enough, but they want to keep it. They don't want to get overexposed, which is really odd because you can't, again, swing a dead cat without running into Peyton or Eli Manning. I mean, they're coaching the whatever that is, Pro Bowl, whatever the Pro Bowl is, whatever that thing is. Anyway, fast forward to the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, man, State Farm commercials, Subway, uh, Pfizer commercials, get the shot. Look, are they overexposed, Taylor Swift, or are they becoming more lovable? Are they captivating America? There is always a popular team, and they always equate it to the Beatles. Ah, it's like the Beatles were coming to town. I had the chance to do that, playing at Indiana. Every time Bob Knight went into the arena in 82, 85, whatever, the place was nuts. All right, it's kind of fun. People would be in the lobbies because they wanted a glimpse, not at us, but at Coach Knight. All right, do you become more fun or are you becoming annoying, the Kansas City Chiefs? Let's go buy some things. Let's go buy some things. Yesterday, you got Trailer Swift, Travis Kelsey, their relationship, Patrick Mahomes, the dad bot, that's endearing. I don't care what anybody says. Brittany frickin' Mahomes continues to be closer to Jackson Mahomes than she does to Patrick Mahomes. She's becoming an insufferable brat. Have they become annoying? All right, let's hear from Travis Kelsey about the circus. Trav, did, did you have any idea, I guess, when you, let's say, 18 months ago, two years ago. Do you have any idea, like, when everything with your podcast, obviously relationship that everyone wants to talk about, do you have any idea it would be this? I knew, I'm sure you thought, okay, this is going to be something, but now does it feel like this is, oh, I was not, uh, I was not anticipating how this kind of has played out, but it's got to be fun and exciting at the same time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's exciting for me, but it was all brand new, man. I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I've from having the paparazzi follow me every single day into work to, you know, just uh, everybody having their having my name on their talk show every single day, whether it's sports, whether it's not sports. Um, you know, it's just been a, it's been a crazy, crazy ride. I could have never anticipated, man. But um, I'm having fun with it. The majority of the world is having fun with it outside of all the cranky. NFL fans that just don't want to see the Chiefs win. It's coming um, around. So, they thought yeah. you were fake. They and, thought you were fake. And you know fake. what? We're slowly reeling them in. Yep. We're slowly reeling yep. them in. They just, they, they're fighting it right now. You know, what, you know what I think it was? I think we all. Yeah, he's right. You are slowly reeling them in. You are. Because winners get the prize. I mean, let's just make that clear. Winners we like. So if you lose, people would be saying, well, well, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Taylor Swift distracted him. Taylor Swift put him over there when he should have been over here. Ah, but when you win, particularly when you win the way the Chiefs won, and Travis Kelsey wasn't good, he was great. He was phenomenal. He actually, and I've never seen this before, and I, I, I thought about it actually during the game. He was kind of willing the Kansas City Chiefs to win. Like, he was tougher than tough, and everybody piggybacked on it. So, yes, I agree with him. Swifties, I don't know. I mean, it has helped the NFL. There's like $450 million pouring into the NFL, whatever the number is, from the relationship between Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and all the publicity. We get all that, okay? But that's not that's not what I'm really talking about. You're going to see the highest-rated Super Bowl ever because more people are drawn to the sideshow. If you want to call it the circus, I just call it two people. Maybe they're in love. And we all respond because that's what we do now. Two people that are famous in love must be responded to by us. 
we must talk about it. We must share it. We must have an opinion on it. Is it real? Is it fake? Is it right? Is it wrong? Does it help? Does it hurt? It's really kind of funny. But you know we're going to comment on it. And thus, because we will continue to comment on it and we have two weeks to do it, a week and a half right now, you know what's going to happen. It's going to draw more interest. And by the time we get to Super Bowl Sunday, the game is like at 6.30. The coverage starts at like, you know, two days before. I don't know. People are going to be watching. Uh, Colin Cowherd had some thoughts on people that don't or haven't bought in to Kelsey, haven't bought in in particular to Taylor Swift. Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Love him. Drake on everything. Spike Lee, Knicks games. Eminem, Michigan sporting events. We celebrate it. 80s, 90s, Jack Nicholson, Laker games is cool. Saw Jack. But a talented and beautiful woman is on the air, one who would never pay attention to lonely men, and it bothers them. There's a stat out there, it's kind of uncomfortable for you sad guys, that 50% of men never have real intimacy with a woman. That means the other 50% have multiple intimate relationships with women. And those ones that don't are angry and sad and lonely, and they are often misogynistic and resent women who didn't give them the time they think they deserve. We celebrate all these goofballs jumping on tables in Buffalo and cheese hats and men and men and Matthew McConaughey and Drake and Jack Nicholson, men and men and men and Eminem and it's cool and can I get a selfie and I can't believe I saw... And a young, attractive, beautiful, talented woman comes on for 25 seconds. And you're bothered. Uh, Okay. Uh, Is that it? Yeah, okay. He's not wrong. I'm not ready to paint all men that are mad at this thing with a broad brush. One thing I know. One thing I do know is there is a section of men out here that simply say, hey, man, I just want football. Now, I would argue that Cowherd, myself, others celebrate broadly Jack Nicholson or Drake or Spike Lee or whatever. I would argue that we discuss it more than anybody else. Like, I do think he's right when you say, hey, look, Spike Lee, can I get a picture? Hey, look, I saw Jack Nicholson at the club in the forum. I do agree with that, but I don't think anybody broadcast or goes to a game and says, hey, look, I got to see Jack. I got to see Spike. I do think this woman, as they're calling her, I've had a lot of people in my mentions say this woman is ruining football. And I think to myself, this woman is enhancing football. Well, you know, this woman is ruining Kelsey. How'd that work out? How'd that work out the other day? Did this woman ruin Kelsey? This woman has been awesome in every way. You know what also makes her awesome? How into it she is. It is. How into it. I mean, she's dancing. She's giving the faces. And what did people do? They immediately went to it's fake. This is fake, they said, this picture right here. Her excitement is fake. I don't know. I think I'm pretty good at reading body language, but she's an actress. She's a star. She's a show person. She could fake me out. But it's awesome. If you're going to be annoyed by the Kansas City Chiefs, be annoyed that they're so good. Be annoyed that they whoop your ass. Be annoyed. Let me show you this next picture. Let me show you a picture of Patrick Mahomes. Not that one. He looks like a stud there. Let me show you the dad bod picture of Patrick Mahomes. Be annoyed that that bod right there is whooping your team's ass. That's what you should be annoyed by. You NFL fans, and uh, Colin brought it up, the guy's jumping on tables. Hey, look, Bills, you can't beat that. Don't be annoyed at Taylor Swift. Be annoyed that that body right there is piggybacking on the same body except Tom Brady wore it. Yo, why they have to do me like that? See, that to me is fun. That to me is why we like Brady. 
It's why we like Mahomes. They will interact. Yeah, they take themselves serious, of course. But, man, they'll interact and laugh at themselves as well. Now, Brittany Mahomes, I'm not all in on. You want to see a little TikTok video of Brittany Mahomes and tell me if you're all in on her? I've had enough. I have. I've had enough. She's more towards Jackson Mahomes, who, by the way, we haven't heard much of. Let's show you Brittany Mahomes. Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to see there. I think I'm supposed to see her waving people off. I tell you this, Jackson Mahomes is a big kid. Jackson Mahomes is a real big kid. I don't, I don't have anything on that. I thought I would. I think I'm missing something. But let me give you a little more Brittany Mahomes. I'm very careful about this. I'm very careful. A couple years ago, Urban Meyer, myself, my stepson, were leaving Indiana's football game. I called up Nick's. I said, hey, can we get some three or four Stroms to go? Yeah. My stepson went in, picked up the order, and didn't tip. He didn't know to tip on a takeout order. He's a young kid. I called him back. I said, hey, look, Van Dockett's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I picked up an order. My stepson, hey, we need to put a 25% tip on that. I'm very kind. I love the tip. I'm a big tipper. I am. I'm not going to lie to you. I like to tip. Tipping makes me feel better than eating. It does. Yeah. And if anybody ever tells you, because I know how it gets with me, well, Doc, it's this, Doc, no, no, no. If anybody, you can say what you want about me. I'm a bad guy, heathen, whatever, disgusting human being, whatever you want to say. But do not say that I don't tip. Well, anyway, here is Brittany Mahomes. Brittany Mahomes gets absolutely flamed by a restaurant person. Now, if I'm the restaurant owner, I'm firing this person. But here is what was said relative to Brittany Mahomes. Let's have a look. Today I realize the world doesn't like Brittany Mahomes, not because she's annoying. No, I don't like her because she doesn't tip restaurant staff. I worked at the One Hotel West Hollywood. I was a server, barista, bartender. I did every position and I believe Brittany was in town to shop for her wedding dress. And my first interaction with her, she ran up over a hundred dollar tab. She was with her whole posse. Uh, Patrick was not there, but I believe their tab was well over a hundred dollars, maybe like a hundred thirty zero dollar tip. And that happens sometimes, so I was willing to let the first one slide, and I'm like, maybe she just didn't like me, maybe it was something I said. Um, but they were there for almost a week, I think, and did not tip a single one of our staff. And not only did she not tip, she was just genuinely unpleasant, and I totally understand celebrities don't owe you anything, especially when you're out in public. As a public figure, you should always go out thinking, okay, the people I interact with are clocking these interactions and they're gonna remember this. And I will always remember that, Brittany. <laughs> I only judge people based off of their character and I think one of the easiest ways to judge someone's character is how they treat someone in a position lesser than them. And let's just say, character assessed. I feel dumber. I feel dumber for watching that because we don't know if that's true or not. Nick and Nick, don't do that to me again. I feel dumber. Like, anybody can go on a TikTok and say it. That's just piling on, and I apologize. Come on, Nick and Nick. That's just some idiot out there that could get on a screen and just pile on. People can do that about anybody. Yeah, I'm not the biggest Brittany Mahomes fan, but that's crap. I smack myself for having... I'm dumber. What is that line that they had in the... Uh, in one of those movies, uh, we thank you for it, but we are dumber for how... Brittany didn't... Shut up. Maybe you didn't deserve a tip. And if I were the wait staff or I was the manager of wherever that woman worked, I'd fire her tomorrow. See, wait staff should be like Omerta. Should be like Arthi. Should be like... Just shut up. Should be like us playing for Bob Knight in the 70s and 80s. Hey, look, it's our thing. Yeah, it's our thing. You don't like what's happened? Don't matter. It's our thing. Leave me alone. Oh, man. When there's no coming back from that. There's no coming back from that, Nick and Nick. No coming back. I am dumber for having watched that blonde woman. I am dumber for having watched that TikTok. I will never get two minutes of my life back. <laughs> All right, let's move it on. Let's move it forward. Oh, man. Well, Brittany didn't tip, and Brittany didn't want to tip, and I wish Brittany would tip, and she didn't tip anybody, and it was over $100. Oh, shut up. 
What did she do at the end? Did she tip at the end? Did she put a big tip at the end on her bill? Shut up, lady. And quit with the Botox. You're too young. Uh, Cam Newton can't stop seeking attention. Cam Newton has a horrendous take here on Brock Purdy. And for some reason, Cam Newton, before we, while we watch this video, I want you guys to tell me something. What's he dressed like? You know what I mean? Uh, What's he dressed like in this upcoming video? I've never said that Brock Purdy was trash. What I did say is Brock Parody is a game manager. That's not hate. That's just what I feel to be facts. But I still reserve the right to say this. To be labeled a game changer, Brock Parody has to be the best player on the offensive side of the ball. Mm. And that's not the case. And who's the best player? T- Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Man, look, I ain't recanting shit. Go. And if you really... Want to just be honest, if you add in a defensive talent and you add in an offensive talent, Brock Parity is the 10th best player on his team. Okay, cool. Did he have a great game? Yes. Yeah. Is he been playing out of his mind? Yes. Is he a quarterback that's hot? Yeah. Yes. But he's still the 10th best player on his team. Uh, you don't remember uh, his dad is a preacher. Cam Newton. His dad's one of those preacher guys. So there you go. Yeah, okay, just name the 10. I mean, it's, 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 let me explain one thing to you. Down, ball, late. He's the best player on the field. That's all you need to know. Down, my team is down. We got the ball, and it's late. Now, do you want the ninth best player behind center? Eighth? How about the seventh? How about Christian McCaffrey? You're going to run the single wing? No. The most important part of an NFL game, down with the ball, late. That's it. And that guy right there delivers. Now, I don't give a damn what some crazy-ass ex-NFL quarterback says. I would. I would care. But I can tell by the way he is speaking that he's just being a preacher that is speaking to get attention. I don't care if he's the 53rd best player on the team. You're down. You've got the ball. It's late. Fred Warner, you want him with the ball? Sure. George Kittle? Yeah. You want Fred Warner to intercept a pass. You want George Kittle to catch a pass. Get open first, catch pass second. But the fact of the matter is, you can debate all you want. You can debate whether he is a game manager, and it is the dumbest argument ever. A game manager means you win. That's what it means. Because there are levels. Superstar, superstar in the making, game manager, don't play. Backup. That's the levels in the NFL. And you can be a superstar. See, one of the interesting guys, now you can go from Superstar in the making to don't play. And I'll give you Justin Fields. Justin Fields will never be described as a game manager. Why? I really don't know. I I, I don't know. Maybe it's because he's got immense talent, immense arm talent, and people feel like Brock Purdy doesn't. I, I don't know. But I know this. Josh Fields, if he gets traded and then starts on the journey of the traded journeyman quarterback, until he finds a home, maybe as a backup, and then Geno Smith style as a starter, is never going to be considered a game manager. Better to be considered a game manager than a journeyman backup. But the fact of the matter is, this dude makes the right decision, this dude throws it to his team, this dude runs it when he has to, and it's really a stupid conversation, period. Because you can throw that out on anybody. You know, and to be the game manager, you have to be the best player on the offense. Really? I don't know. A lot of people would argue Gronkowski was the best player on Tom Brady's offenses. There are some that would argue that when Randy Moss was with Tom Brady, Tom Brady was the best player, or excuse me, Randy Moss was the best player on New England's offense those years. You don't have to be the best player. You got to be great at your position. 
I mean, best player, how do you define best player, as Cam Newton said? Do you define best player by salary, by statistics? Well, last I looked, Christian McCaffrey doesn't have very good passing statistics, and Brock Purdy doesn't have very good rushing statistics. So how do you judge best player in football? Basketball, it's kind of easy. I mean, that Tristan Newton for UConn is leading his team in every category. Scoring, rebounding, assists. I'd say that shows he's the best player. But there are guys, I don't know if you know this, Cam Newton, but there are guys in football on the offense and the defense that go through an entire career and never touch the football. So how do you define best player? Man, he's the best player on the team. He's the 10th best player on the team. I almost fell asleep there. How do you define it? I'll tell you this. He's one of the two best quarterbacks left out of 32. Is he a better player than George Kittle? How would you define that? It's a stupid argument. It's a really stupid argument. Give me the 10 better players and tell me why they're better. Well, because he catches them. Okay. We knew this was coming. This was, you, you know how you go and you hear somebody, Jimmy Irsay did it here in Indy. Somebody says, we're all in. Our chips are pushed in on the table. We are all in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-uh. We're all in on this season. Well, the New York Jets were all in. I mean, they are the definition of all in. When Aaron Rodgers came over, and if you saw Hard Knocks or you saw any of the press coverage, Aaron Rodgers was a de facto GM. Aaron Rodgers was a de facto team captain. Aaron Rodgers was at the level of ownership. All decisions went through Aaron Rodgers on the field, off the field coaching. They went all in. And everybody gets excited with that, right? Everybody, My team's all in. We pushed all our chips in the table. Well, be careful what you wish for. Because Aaron Rodgers, now it's starting to come. Now here we go. The, the media, who will always turn on you when things don't go your way, the media is now saying this. Wednesday's report paints the Jets as a rudderless ship. Sources describe Rodgers as the de facto general manager ahead of the real GM, Joe Douglas. Let's stop right there. What do you think? Let me ask you a question. Owner Woody Johnson comes into the office. There's Joe Douglas. There's Aaron Rodgers. They're talking about a player. If I'm Woody Johnson, I am listening to my general manager about what to do with the player, not Aaron Rodgers, if they have differences. I guarantee, or at least this is the way it seemed, everything that Rodgers said was going to be listened to. And a guy like Joe Douglas was in real jeopardy, Robert Sala, if you did not go along. Oh, I could see that a mile away. And I don't think I actually recognized it until I saw the implosion. Now, you blame it on, of course, you blame it on the quarterback, but that implosion was much deeper. Let's continue. While the quarterback's hand-picked offensive coordinator, Nathan, Nate Hackett, Nathan Nathaniel Hackett, is accused of losing the player's trust. What's more, head coach Robert Sella is said to be obsessed with negative press, and although he publicly defended backup quarterback Zach Wilson, he's alleged to have blamed Rodgers' backup privately for the struggles. Let me stop it right there. Well, of course he did. I mean, what do you think? What do you think Robert Sala privately is going to do? Do you think Robert Sala privately is going to go, yeah, you know, we lost Rodgers. I didn't coach it right. We got too distracted with stupid stuff. Yeah, of course, no. What he's going to do is he's going to do what most coaches do. You got to find someone to blame. You got to deflect. Look, I didn't draft Zach Wilson. You all did. Joe Thomas, you did. That's where Joe Thomas has a real problem. Because if I'm Woody Wilson or Woody Williams or Woody Johnson or whatever the hell the guy's name is, I guess it's Johnson and Johnson, so it's Woody Johnson. I got an eye. I got an under eye going towards Joe Douglas. I do. I got an under eye. What does that mean? That means you drafted Zach Wilson. Why am I listening to you about anything else? 
That's the under eye. Jaundice. I don't know what that means, but I've heard it. I'm looking at him with a jaundice eye. He drafted Zach Wilson. But anyway, here's another one. One unnamed coach so said he was alarmed. Now, here we go. We're going to start blaming Nathaniel Hackett. By Hackett's paltry level of preparation following the Rodgers injury, saying he'd never seen a team watch so little scouting tape on opponents. To many, the organization, this is the important part, seemed resigned to its fate, even after Wilson pulled out a miraculous season opening win over the Bills in relief of Rodgers. Let me explain this to you. From a coaching perspective, there are two things here. When you put so much in on a guy, man, oh, man, and that guy gets hurt or that guy doesn't deliver, you've built this thing up to a pyramid. Let me show you where you can see it on camera. To a pyramid. And on the top of the pyramid is your guy. He's going to lead us. And when that heads south, everybody's looking at each other. This has been the focus. This has been the purpose. This has been the objective. This has been the guy. He's gone. What do we do now? Take some strong leadership. It's like this. There are two theories in coaching. Bob Knight, Urban Meyer. I'll give them both to you. Urban Meyer made a big deal about rivalries. There's a clock in Ohio State in their locker room, in their weight room. How many hours until the Michigan game? When he was at Indiana or when he was at Bowling Green on the schedule in the locker room, he highlighted the Toledo game. And Urban Meyer has been unbelievable, unbelievable, like his record is the best ever in rivalry games. Unbelievable. All right, Bob Knight. Bob Knight, none of it. Every game is treated the same. When we had really good players, we beat Purdue. When Purdue had better players, they beat us. Bob Knight's theory was, I don't want to wait, make one more game bigger than the other because if we win that game, how big a letdown going to be? Does it mean the next game's not that important? If we lose that game, does it mean the season's over? I don't want to do that. Two theories there. How do these pertain to Rodgers? Rodgers took the Urban Meyer theory. Rodgers and the Jets took, we're going to build this up. This is our thing. He is our man. Build it, build it, build it. Now, had Rodgers stayed healthy, who knows what would have happened. Might have been the right way to go. But clearly it wasn't the right way to go. Once Rodgers got hurt, clearly they didn't have the leadership. It's very interesting. It is. That is very, very interesting to me. Next, Jason Kidd. Listen to this. Luka Doncic is 24 years old. And Jason Kidd says he is in the atmosphere of Michael Jordan. Okay. Man, why? Look, I get it. Doncic is really good. I get it. But have, I don't know, to this point, has Dallas been really good? Now, let's talk atmosphere. When Michael Jordan came out and was dropping 63 against the Celtics in a playoff game, People said the same thing that I just said about Michael Jordan. I just said about Luka Doncic. Have they won anything? The answer is no. Doncic's done a lot of great things. Jordan did a lot of great things. as a 24, 25-year-old, young guy, NBA. Doncic played as a phenomenal youth player coming through in Europe, playing at 13 with the men, all that kind of stuff. Jordan played on national championship team. 1982, got his ass beat by us in 1984. We'll talk to Steve Alford about that coming up at about 1030. But the truth of the matter is this. They are in the same atmosphere right now. A lot of numbers when they're young. Team doesn't win much when they're young. But can we pump the brakes on it? Here's what Jason Kidd had to say. Jason Kidd had to say, look, he's better than Dirk. He's in the atmosphere of MJ. Best to ever do it. LeBron, Kobe. And so, just to appreciate what this young young man is doing at the age of 24 is something that Dallas has never seen. I've said this internally. He is better than Dirk. Does think Dirk can never do. Now he, and now is the opportunity, getting the right people around him, to ultimately win the championship. Let me read between the lines for you on this comment. Yes, I do think that Jason Kidd believes Luka Doncic is really good. Yes, I do believe there are a lot of things probably 
that Dirk could not do that Luka Doncic could do. Sure. And some things that Dirk could do that Luka couldn't do. Even though it doesn't seem like Dirk Nowinski was that long ago, the NBA's changed. Waltz to the rim, lay it in, who cares? But I got to tell you, here is the backstory. 100 years ago, Pat Riley talked about coaching in the NBA. He had Magic. He had Kareem. He said, the most important thing for me is to make sure that Kareem, Magic, and I are on the same page. You got to get your best players to get on the same page with you, to like you, to respect you, to want to be coached by you. And then the others follow along. What's Jason Kidd doing? I'm Dirk Nowinski, or excuse me, I am Luka Doncic. I read this. I like my coach. I like my coach. It's not like Dallas has won championships. It's not like Dallas has been great under Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd, like everybody else, is fighting like hell to keep his job. So he says those things. He's better than Dirk. Does things that Dirk could never do. I'm going to give players, I'm going to speak like a player now. And Jason Kidd was a great player. I'm going to speak like a player. He's up there with MJ. He's up there with Kobe. He's up there with LeBron. Okay. Okie doke. All right. Smart. That's the backstory. I'll give you another one. I'll give you a different one. Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is in Minnesota, and he's scoring a lot of points. And he's making a lot of noise, and he's supposedly really good. Anthony Edwards got Tom Crean, one of my favorite coaches, fired at Georgia. He went to Georgia. They didn't win nothing. Now he's in the NBA. I think he's in Minnesota, and eh. Anthony Edwards hasn't earned the right to bitch, whine, and moan about the officials. Anthony Edwards said this. The officials were bad tonight. Yeah, they were terrible. We're playing eight on five. The cat got their tongue tonight. It's all good. It's not fair, but it's all good. I'm going to take the fine because the refs did not give us any calls tonight. See, I don't know why, but I want to hear from Jason Kidd. I want to hear from LeBron. I want to hear from Anthony Edwards. I don't know why. Young guys, entitled guy. I, I just don't. I, I'm, I'm weird about that. I just, I simply don't want to hear from him. I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. I don't. Deion Sanders back in the news. Deion Sanders claims other teams have contacted him about possibly leaving Colorado. He better be careful with that. I'm going to tell you what. Back in the day, I always have a story. There was a great basketball coach at Wisconsin named Dick Bennett. For whatever the reason, I called Dick Bennett when I got the Bowling Green job. And we were talking, and he goes, what are you doing about coach's show? I go, I'm not doing nothing. I go, coach, I just want to win, and then all that stuff will come. He goes, ah, that's a perfect answer. That's what I learned from Coach Knight. Dick Bennett said, you know what? Take care of the winning. Get good players. Get your system in. Get your offense, your defense, your transition. Get it all in. Get it to the point where you're going to win games, and then things will come. And it, it, it happened. After year three, we win a championship at Bowling Green. First time they had done it since 1983, 20-some years. Next thing you know, I'm offered a job at West Virginia. Next thing you know, yeah. Deion Sanders is going the other way. Deion Sanders started hot, and Deion Sanders is now claiming. He's doing some claiming. Ah, other schools are coming at me. Really? Huh. I don't inherit a legacy. I build it. I like that. Maybe that means, maybe, just maybe, that means that he's staying at Colorado. I don't know what his options are. Here's Deion Sanders. Many times this past season, meaning from, let's say, December to today, your phone rung about you potentially going to other opportunities <laughs> to coach. How many times? <laughs> couple times. Couple times. Couple times. But I'm happy where I am. As you see, if I'm out there um, home shopping with, the, with my kid, that means I don't plan on going anywhere. No. I got a kickstand down. I'm mm -hmm. straight. I mean, I'm straight. I, I love this fan base. I love I'm looking out the window right now, these snow-covered mountains. I love I've been snowmobiling the last two weekends. It's key. That's something that a Florida boy ain't never done in his life. <laughs> so 
Absolutely love it. I mean, Skip, I even got on one of those lift things, man. You I did? had to get in the one that was enclosed because I was not about to get in the one that you're hanging outside. No. But I got in the lift. I mean, loving life right now. My kids are uh, snowboarding. Shallow is Shador. I'm telling him to take it easy, but he went out snowmobiling with a couple of his linemen. So we're doing things that we have we would have never fathomed, man, and I'm happy about it. But I love me some Colorado. Wow. Like, I'm going to give my boy, Mr. Urich Brett, uh, my commissioner, he told me this, but I took it after the third time. I don't inherit a legacy. I build it. Mm. Okay? Beautiful. Yeah, I'm not that kind of guy that's going to run off to somebody else's school and, and inherit an already okay. winning team and they just two, three games away. No, no, no. I inherited some bull junk and I'm going to fix it. You did. All right. All right. I love the... the, the, the uh... The pandering. Well, you did. Yeah, you, you, you right. Yeah, you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I got a lot to get to, but don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, roses are red, violets are blue. Trim your balls and your date will thank you. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Date will thank us too. Uh, what's up, fellas? Valentine's Day is knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Manscaped is the remedy for what the love doctor ordered his prescription, the all-new Performance Package 5.0 unit, Ultra, Ultra, 5.0 Ultra. I have one. I love it. It is designed to elevate your grooming game and shine like the heartthrob you are. Do yourself a favor. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com, snack 20% off, plus free shipping with code, write this down, don't, capital letters, don't A-T-M-E. What does that spell? Don't at me. 20% off, free shipping, code, don't at me, manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code, don't at me, 